Hello. Good morning, everybody. How's it going? So glad you're here. I'm Todd Nock, professional comic book artist, and we are going to continue this Post-it Pop Art series where I draw a popular character on a Post-it note. Feel free to draw along with me. You don't have to draw it on a Post-it note. You don't have to use the same tools I use. Use whatever paper and art supplies you have there in your house. But I will share with you which art tools I'm using, just so you know. Um, hopefully everyone's staying well this COVID-19 season. Hopefully you're staying uh, hopeful and well and uh, washing those hands. So, gang, um, I'm drawing data. Data from Star Trek Next Generation. I thought uh, if you've caught my, my uh, theme this week, we had Optimus Prime on Monday, RoboCop on Tuesday, Data from Star Trek on Wednesday. It's robot week. I'm doing robots, drawing robots this week on Post-it Notes. Um, so we have two more days of robots. What will Thursday and Friday bring? We'll see. Um, so with Data, I'll be drawing kind of, it's a real person who plays the, the part of Data, an actor named Brent Spiner. Uh, who does a great job. I'm not going to be doing a, a photorealistic life drawing of Brent Spiner or even of Data. I'm going to be drawing a style, my, my comic book style of the character Data more so than anything else. So it'll have some elements that will hopefully make the character look recognizable but going through my comic book art filter. So let's flip the camera around and let's get to drawing. All right. There we go. Back in the rig. Bring the light around. Okay. So starting with my Unikura Toga mechanical pencil, 0.3 HB lead. Now I've got some Google search image reference here of the character data, just so I can try to capture some of the aspects and elements that make data, data. Starting with that circle for his skull. He has a little bit of a long face, not terribly long, but it's not quite a squared off face. Kind of a slender, slender jawline. Not too pointy of a chin, but definitely not like a Captain America square jaw. Just gonna have him look not quite straight on, but not quite too far to the right, but just a little bit. Not too thick of a neck. He's not a beefy, muscular, super muscular guy. But we want just enough neck there where it's not too skinny, but not too thick. This is why the sketch stage is so helpful, because it allows me to break down the shapes, figure out what I want to build on. Next, we're going to find that eye line, roughly from the top of the head to the chin. You can go about halfway to get the eye line. Halfway from the eye line to the chin. It's a good line for the nose, and then nose to the chin for the mouth. I start to rough in the ears. Because his head's turned a little bit, we'll see a little bit more of this ear than that ear. We'll see a little bit more of this side of the face. A little bit less of this side of the face because his head's turned to look that way. I want to know where the top of his skull is, so when I add his hair, it fits on top of the skull. So his skull always kind of has like this almost wide-eyed sort of inquisitive look as he's processing the world around him. Bit of an eyelid. Definitely pronounce those eyelids. He's got some very light eyebrows. They're not heavy, dark eyebrows. We're going to kick one up. So this one's down, but this one's up a little bit like he's just heard some sort of human colloquialism. That's a hard word to say early in the morning. Colloquialism? Don't say that word a lot. Maybe I shouldn't, since I don't know if I can even say it properly, because it's not a word I use in everyday life. Some aspect of humanity that kind of goes against his logic circuits. 
or confounds his logic circuit. So the one eyebrow kicking up like that. I'm going to run these cheek lines down here as I continue to structure out his face. This helps give me the foundation I need for the final lines to come in momentarily. Now I want to get his nose in here. He has kind of an, a long nose. It kind of has a nice shape here at the end with the tip of the nose. So not every line I, I'm penciling here will be in the finished art. It's just all guidelines for me to make choices. If I know where everything is, I can then choose what I want, hopefully more accurately. Hairline can oftentimes start from the top of the head to the eye line around the middle. Halfway is about where a hairline can start. We're going to move it up just a little bit just to give a little more forehead, that super robot brain underneath. So it kind of goes across the forehead and where I have that center line or that side line right there, I know I can bring, start bringing the hair down to his pointy sideburns. Since his head's turned a little bit, we don't see quite as much on this side. And I can start to rough out the shape of the top of his hair coming up off of his skull just a little bit. All his hair is slicked back. And then we can flare it out to the side there like that. Uh, ears kind of are from the top of the eyebrow down to the nose line, roughly. A little bit of hair on the back there like that. So it's starting to look a little bit like uh, data. The, the slick back hair lines there. Lines for the hair. This is the hair line, but then these are lines for the hair. And then uh, he always often has just a very simple uh, facial expression. Drawing that little trough there helps me figure out the top lip. Rarely does he smile. Rarely does he show any emotion, being a robot. A little bottom lip there, a little shadow, creates a bottom lip. Just uh, double checking the almond shape of my eyes, of his eyes, the eyes I am drawing. Flesh out that ear a little bit more. Still need to put the pupils and irises in his eyes. Now this is my first time drawing this character. I have never officially drawn data before. I'm going to draw the uniform that I like best. One that had the little bit of the collar and the little dots on the collar here like this. I can't remember which season they brought this in. I haven't watched this show in a long time. I haven't watched Picard yet either, but I hear Picard is very good. So I need to check that out on the CBS app. Just got to find so many other things that I like to watch. It's hard to find time to watch all the stuff that's streaming out there. Okay. Just double check my mouth. Need to get these pupils and irises in. So now I can just put a circle right there, kind of tucking up. Touching the top eyelid, but not touching the bottom eyelid. And then, so the color part is the cornea, then the little black part is the pupil. Or the iris. The color part is the iris. Pardon me. If there are any ophthalmologists working or watching, hopefully you're working. Please forgive my. Not sure if I'm getting all the eye parts named correctly. 
um, his, the black part's the pupil, the color part is the iris. That's what I meant to say. Forget which part of the eye is the cornea. I'll have to go back to my, and, uh, why didn't I keep my biology book from high school? Oh yeah, we're not allowed to keep them. We have to turn them in at the end of the year. That's why I don't have it. All right, so that's, that hopefully is recognizable as data. If you were just to take a passing glance and you had to make a guess at what character is this. All this will be filled in black. So like I said at the top of the show, if you just tuned in, I'm drawing data from Star Trek Next Generation, but I'm drawing them in my comic book style. I'm not doing a photorealistic illustration of actor Brent Spiner. I'm drawing a comic book version uh, of this character, or how I would draw this character if I was drawing a Star Trek comic book. How would he look in my style? Be a little wrinkle there on his eyebrow. Or above his eyebrow there. Just double check the nose here. Because I do want him to look as recognizable as possible. Okay, those little putting those little lines there by the side of his face actually made him look more smiley than I wanted him to. Want him to have be as non-expression, not as as non-expressive. That's how I want to structure that sentence. Not expressive as possible, which can be a real challenge to do sometimes. To make a character look not expressive. All right, so now I can come in here and drop in the inks. We're going to just use black microns here. So my double zero five, my zero eight, and my zero one pigma micron pens. And let's start putting some inks down. Yeah, these pens are sliding all over my drafting, drafting, drafting table. It has me so flustered I can't say the word drafting. So I'm going to start on the kind of main shape contours. It's like his jawline, his ears, his hair. And then we'll come in and put finer details in the face. These are just the, the core shapes that I want to focus on right now. A thicker line to show the main shape. Thicker line to show more what's in the foreground in this regard. Trying to create that depth. Pick a little texture here through the hair. I don't want too much because his hair is really slicked back. So much so that it almost takes away the organic feel of his hair, which really helps and plays into the robot aspect of the character. Which I thought was a great design that they came up with for for data. It makes sense that his hair would be as robotic as he is. I think it was very well thought out. And the collar of his shirt, or his uniform, I should say. It's a little lip of yellow trim, I guess I should say.
down the shoulders here. Just like that. And then we've got those little, I'm not quite sure what the, I guess they're kind of like buttons or little studs or uh, not quite an insignia. But I'm sure it's some sort of, it, it identifies some sort of ranking in Starfleet, I would imagine. We're going to create some. Uh... So I'm imagining the light hitting his shoulders here. So I'm going to cr create some separation of the black and I can do a fade when we start adding uh, the Copic marker here. So I'll fill all of this in black here momentarily. Just creating a buffer around these little studs and around the trim so I want to come in with a brush that can still maintain the shape. All right, so now I can uh, start working on the insides of his face. So I'm going to start with the 0, 1 micron. Get a nice point there. He has pointy sideburns. I can start to work on those inner folds and canals of the, uh, of the ear. Gonna switch to the double zero five for some really fine lines for his facial features here. I want to be very cautious or as cautious as I can be. To uh, try to capture as much of the of a similarity to the character. Bridge of the nose there. A little bit of the cheek line there. Let's try these eyes now. Trying to maintain that kind of wide-eyed look without making him look like he's got wide, crazy eyes. Which could be a real challenge to, um, to get that shape. The fact that we see his really have a pronounced upper eyelid here can kind of help with that. And let's see, we'll feather in some uh, eyebrows here. His eyebrows were not a heavy, not a thick and heavy eyebrow, so I want to maintain sort of that, that wispiness. And then that one arcing eyebrow arcs up, and then backs over, back over. Let's see if we can get this mouth just... The right, just the right amount of inexpression. And that bottom lip, a little bit to the chin.
slight arc there to his brow. And then to the eyeball here, he's got those yellow eyes. Gonna thicken these eyelids just a little bit, not too much. Don't want him to look like he's got some Maybelline Fresh Lash going on. Don't want to create enough depth that his eyes, that there's just enough expression. Because that's the thing about Data, is that even though he's a robot, there was a bit of a humanity to him. You know, he kind of, there's just something there that made you, that made you, that made us uh, be able to connect to the character. That he wasn't so robotic that he was like an appliance, but that there was a character to him. A character that came from the inside, you know. Which I think Brent Spiner did a great job portraying. A wonderful job portraying. So, um, and really made Data a beloved character. Um, so that when we did have those moments where he acted almost human or truly acted human, it, it made it even more fun. Made the show more fun or some really... Great, really great, great moments. Now his hair is dark, and I'm probably going to want to put some uh, some black in here. But before I do that, do, do that, I want to kind of rough thin. Just kind of give myself an idea where it's like how I've had the black fading to the white. Well, it's not really fading; it's black. It's white, but the grays will come in here and create that fade. I'll, I'll want to do the same here for his hair. So the light's hitting on top of his head but the, the line work is fading towards the light. And I can use my brush pen to kind of work some of that in. And for the bigger chunks, I will uh, fill that in black after I erase. So I'm using a zebra, the zebra brush pen, uh, fine point. So I'm able to kind of just ride the lines that I've established here for his slicked back hair. Looks like I'll be filling all this in anyway. These spots aren't too terribly big, so it's a little easier to fill in. And then down the side there. And that'll take a moment to dry. I want to make sure it's dry before I start erasing to help avoid smudging. So I'm going to take my kneaded art gum eraser and I'm going to at least erase, start erasing from the bottom because I know this stuff is dry. to start taking out all of these guidelines. They are no longer needed. They have served their function. It's time for them to go. Okay. Now I'm going to come in with Copic Marker. Now, because Data has a very pale skin, um, it's, it's, you know, a, a kind of an inhuman sort of pale skin, whereas a yellow uniform has yellow eyes, I drew him on a yellow post-it. So a lot of the yellow is already covered. So what I'm going to do here is do a gray scale. I'm just going to use shades of gray to render uh, Data here and, and uh, see how this turns out. So, so um, this will be a little different uh, using Copic markers than I do for most of them that uh, are full color. This is just going to be grayscale. So it's going to be a series of gray, gray uh, tones. Warm gray, probably some cool gray, maybe even neutral gray. So I'm going to start with some warm gray zero. I'm going to start light. And then I can always darken if I need to. So I'm just going to start to sculpt out the angles of his face. 
So because I drew the bridge on this side of the nose, I'm conveying that the light source is coming from a little bit from the left. It's kind of my go-to angle. I'm just going to start to sculpt in each shape, considering each shape and just kind of round it out. Like considering the forehead, the temple of the head, to the occipital bone area here, runs down the cheek and jawline. Usually I like to work from light to dark, but um, since I'm trying a different approach here, I'm going to just work from Usually I work from dark to dark to light is oftentimes or mid range to add dark and add light. This time I'm working light and I'm going to just keep darkening uh, just to make sure I um, feel confident in the uh, the gray tones I'm choosing. So a little warm gray zero. I'm gonna come in with a little cool gray one. I wanna give this a little try here just to darken it up a little bit. Also changing the value here, going to from warm to cool. Just kind of cautiously sculpting. The shapes as I go. Okay, let's go a little bit darker. Okay, bring in, actually, I'm going to switch over to a neutral. Just trying to convey that um, that paleness in his skin, which is a bit of a challenge to do, but it's fun. It's fun to try something new. It's fun to experiment and see what I learn in the process. So don't be afraid to, to just give it a whirl. If you're not sure what to do, just go for it anyway. Don't be afraid of messing up your drawing because you know, if you come through learning something, you can apply that to your next drawing because our hope is to always try to level up over time, bit by bit. So if you mess up a drawing, it's okay to feel frustrated. It's okay to feel disappointed. That's natural, that's human, that's expected, that's okay. But don't let it stop you from trying to draw it again. I'm gonna come in with some warm gray three kind of start to sculpt out his yellow eyes. This warmer color will make his eyes appear more yellow than his skin. It's all about creating an illusion here. I'm gonna use some cool gray, some dark cool gray for the whites of his eyes. I will, bring in, I will be bringing in the white pencil here in a little bit to color in the whites of his eyes. See, for the yellow trim of his uniform here, I'm going to come in with some warm gray four to create an illusion of yellow. Same for these little yellow buttons. Yellow is a warm color. So uh, using these warm grays can convey that. Then let's see, for his hair, that's supposed to be brown, very dark brown. So I'm going to use a dark warm gray, a warm gray five. I'm going to just pull from the dark 
towards the outer part of his hair, which would be where the light is hitting. A little bit of this warm gray through his eyebrows. Just to give them some uh, shape. And we have the, the black of his uniform here. I'm gonna use a neutral gray. And I still have to fill in all that black here in a moment, but for the time being, I'm gonna use some neutral gray here to create a sense of fade from dark to light of his uniforms. So neutral gray six. And we're gonna use some neutral gray four to create a, a fade from black to light gray. Actually, now that I look at those eyes, I wanna add just a little more warm gray. I'm gonna add a little warm gray four, just right up underneath the eyelid, just to create a little more I'm going to say the word life, quote, end quote, life, because he is alive in a sense. He is a functioning being, and there is a personality inside this robot character. So, uh, so that's my intention there. Let's see, I use warm gray five on the hair. I use a little warm gray four to go from darker to lighter. You like that. Now, um, let's see, I want to try something here. I want to create a framing element for him. So I'm going to create this uh, kind of a, almost the top of a hexagon here. What I want to do is create a window. A window like he's on the Enterprise. So we can have some sort of background for him to exist on, I think would be fun. So I'm going to use my straight edge here. I'm just going to create some trim here to the window just to make it look all sciency or futuristic because we'd never see a window like this in present day. All of our windows are squares and rectangles. Never, ever angled shapes. That's only in the future. Only in the future, gang. And it's not the future yet. I don't know when the future is supposed to get here. It seems like it's delayed. It always seems to be the present. It's never the future. I just don't know what's going on. Still waiting on those flying cars and angle shaped windows. Okay. Uh, let's uh, put some. Star Trek metal color in the background. We're going to start with some neutral gray. Some neutral gray three. And then some neutral gray two. have just a little bit of a fade. Now, what would be outside of the window if you're on the Starship? Let's see. What would be outside of the window? Space! Space would be outside of the window. So we're going to create a bit of a grayscale star field, nebula. So I'm starting with some black. Um, Copic marker here. Not really going to let it touch data himself, just because I want to be able to know where that that um, those line weights are for when I bring in my finishing move, which you all know, the Uniball Sigma White Gel Pen. So, so you have some black. And then we're going to take it to some uh, neutral gray seven. to slowly get a, a nice fade from dark to light. Some neutral gray five. Uh, 
And lastly, some neutral gray three. Okay, so now I want to fill in the black of his uniform. I'm gonna use my Pentel pocket brush pen. I have a couple more steps to do and then this illustration is done. So here we go. And now for the, where's my, there it is, the Uniball Signo white gel pen. Gonna do the finishing moves. Gonna start with the outline around data, giving him some pop into the foreground. Actually, before I get too far into that finishing move, I forgot one step. Just gonna put the white in his eyes with my white colored pencil. Put a little bit of white in the tip of his nose there. Maybe a little shading. I'm just going to shade in a little bit of white here in his skin tone, just to give it, make it look a little more pale. Even go over and over some of that gray. So any white pencil will do, any colored, uh, you have a set of colored pencils, oftentimes they come with a white pencil. Some art supply stores, you can buy whatever colors you need, so I just bought a, a white pencil. This is called the Derwent Ink Tents, is the brand, Derwent Ink Tents white pencil. But any brand should do. I'm not particular about any brand of white pencil. It's just what is available. A little bit of this pale in his neck and ears. There we go. That just makes him look a little more. So now back to the finishing move or step one of the finishing move. Step one, do the outline. Bringing the white line all the way to the black line, but not over the black line, is the intention here. Just adding a little bit of second coat into some of these parts for a little more vibrancy. And down the other side. Okay, put a little bit of a highlight in his eye, or both eyes actually. And now to dot, dot in some stars. I want to try to replicate a random star pattern as I, much as I can. I don't want it to look too uniform. <laughs> got, an eye, got one of my eyelashes there on the art. Want different sized dots, different sized clusters, and different sized um, big open areas to try to create 
the illusion of randomness. This isn't truly random. I'm trying to create the illusion of random. Truly random is if I took white paint on a brush and flecked it onto here, it would create a truly random pattern. But since I'm drawing these in, I'm too in control, so I have to create the sense of randomness because it can't be truly random if I'm the one in control here. Just a few more stars. There we go. Final frontier right behind him there. And now to add my signature to this. Uh, it looks like it only is up here in the this part of the wall. We'll just go right up in this corner here. And today is the 15th. Of April. Twenty twenty. There we go. There's data from Star Trek Next Generation, or at least my comic book style rendition of data on a post-it note. All right, so this is a fun challenge to do. Try something different, try something very different for me. So uh, let's flip the camera around and we can uh, wrap up this live stream. All right, how's it going, gang? Thanks so much for tuning in and joining me. I hope you had fun. Hope you learned maybe a tip or trick or two. And uh, yeah, I'll have a shot of data up on my social media and all my social media accounts are listed in the video description below. And I'll also uh, get a link to this uh, post on my Instagram uh, in the video description as well, so you can uh, uh, find it directly. Um, yeah, that's about it. Gang, thanks so much for hanging out with me. Live uh, viewers, thank you so much for all your questions and comments. Sorry, I couldn't catch them all um, since I was so focused on this art challenge here. Um, but I do appreciate you, um, you uh, tuning in. And thanks for joining me each day, 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 noon Eastern time during this COVID-19 stay at home season. Hope everyone is staying well. Uh, if you just discovered my channel, please feel free to subscribe. Just smash that subscribe button and then uh, tap that bell to set your notifications to alert you for when I schedule live streams and upload new art videos. Um, if you like what you saw here, please leave me a thumbs up. I definitely appreciate one of these here. Thank you so much. Please do like this video. Uh, please feel free to share this video. If you have any Star Trek uh, friends or friends or fans, uh, friends or family who are Star Trek fans. How about if I say it that way? Does that work? Friends or family who are Star Trek fans who might enjoy seeing this, um, please share my video with them. And um, don't forget to leave a comment in the section below if you'd like. Gang, thanks so much for hanging out. It's so great to see you. I got a lot of other arts I got to work on today, but thanks for joining me for today's Post-It Pop Art Challenge, and I will uh, see you again real soon. I'm Todd Nock. Keep on drawing. Keep having fun. Bye-bye.